Recently, someone wrote in and said simply, aging is painful. And you know what? He's absolutely right. If you don't proactively do the right things, because being healthy isn't a given. It's not something you can just ignore and hope for the best. The reality is, if you wait until your body starts breaking down before you start caring, you're already too late. That's why being proactive is everything. It's why you don't wait until you have cardiovascular disease to start taking care of your heart. You don't wait until you're diagnosed with cancer to start thinking about prevention. You don't wait until neurodegeneration kicks in to start protecting your brain. And yet, most people do exactly that, waiting until their health declines before taking action. But what if you didn't have to wait? What if there was a way to actively slow down aging, protect against diseases like cancer, restore circadian rhythm, and even reverse cellular damage? It may sound like science fiction, but there is a naturally occurring peptide that can do just that. And yet, most people, even those who talk about peptides, barely scratch the surface when it comes to its research. But this peptide has been around for decades. It was discovered in the 1980s by Professor Covenson. This substance is called epitalin. Despite its extraordinary potential, epitalin remains one of longevity science's best kept secrets, with benefits that few people know about even today. Recently, I watched a video where a guy had stage 3 colon cancer. When he mentioned working with a doctor to trial peptides, I got excited. But to my dismay, epitalin wasn't even mentioned. In fact, not a single peptide from my Precision Peptide Anti-Cancer Stack, the same approach I teach in my Peptide Mastery course and use for my six-figure clients, was mentioned at all. And that is a real shame. We are living in a time where some of the most effective peptides for specific conditions are being completely ignored. And that's exactly why, in this video, I'm going to explain why epitalin might be one of the most important peptides you could take, whether you have cancer or want to prevent it. I'm going to break down all of the literature on this incredible peptide, then dive into the mechanisms to explain exactly how it works. By the way, we are formulating an anti-aging peptide complex which has eight peptides in one capsule. If you want to get access to this and some of the most effective peptide products in the world, check the link in the description or go to peptides.link slash free to sign up for the life-changing magic of peptides free resource kit. That'll put you on the email list, so you'll get exclusive access to the best peptide deals and latest peptide products that we put together for you. But in this video, we are talking about epitalin. Epitalin is derived from the pineal glands peptide extract known as epithalamin, or endolutin. It has no relation to pinealon, despite its name and what other influencers may claim. Epithalamin extract is predominantly containing tripeptides and tetrapeptides, and among the tetrapeptides, there is epitalin, or aspagli, and it stood out for having powerful benefits. Now, epitalin restores melatonin production, which is a hormone whose decline is closely linked to increased morbidity and chronic diseases. But beyond regulating circadian rhythms, epitalin activates telomerase, which is an enzyme that lengthens telomeres and enables more cellular divisions and supports tissue regeneration. It also reverses chromosomal abnormalities, enhances immune function, reduces oxidative stress, and exhibits powerful anti-cancer properties. And epitalin improved brainwave EEG activity in one patient. You can see in this image, the middle section is before epitalin, and the right section is with epitalin. The top two rows represent frontal regions, while the lower rows correspond to subcortical regions. Now the peaks should be uniform and aligned. You can see that with epitalin, there is reduced background noise. Epitalin has even been shown to reduce the expression of senescence markers, P16 and P21, in mesenchymal stem cells, achieving reductions of 1.56 to 2.44 times, which means it wasn't quite as effective as Vesugin here. So if you're interested in stem cells, check out my Vesugin Achieving Superhuman Regeneration with Peptide Activated Stem Cells video on my channel. Because the benefits of epitalin and epithalamin often overlap and some of the largest human studies were conducted with epithalamin, I will explore both in separate sections of this video so that you get a more comprehensive perspective. Epithalamin has been shown to restore the pineal gland function and normalize melatonin production in elderly patients, as you can see in the chart here, and it acts as a potent antioxidant and geroprotector, which is a substance which is anti-aging and pro-longevity. It stimulates subcortical regions in brain explants, whereas cortexin stimulates the cortex, which is at the front of the brain, but even slightly inhibits subcortical regions. This demonstrates a tissue-specific effect of brain regulation, and also that cortexin and epithalamin would be very synergistic with each other so that you get both cortex and subcortical regions stimulation. 
Epithalamin also improves immune function and testosterone in older mice, and it improves the lifespan in three species of animals. In fact, one of the largest human studies conducted with epithalamin took place in the elderly who were living in personal care homes in Russia. They were dosed with 10 milligrams of epithalamin injections each day for 10 days at the start of each year for a period of up to three years, and the observation period lasted eight years. The results were a 2 to 2.4 times reduction in acute respiratory diseases, 1.6 to 1.8 times decrease in all-cause mortality, with a 2.5-fold decrease when combined with thymolin, a 4.1-fold decrease in a smaller group that was receiving both courses each year, but for six years instead of three, indicating that more peptide equaled a better effect. It improved homeostasis, which was measured by the homeostasis state coefficient, which reflects enhanced physiological functions, which are akin to those of younger individuals. There were a lot of conditions that were improved by epithalamin such as a remission in 60% of psoriasis cases with significant improvements seen in the other 40%, a reduced functional age of the cardiovascular system, and normalized lipid profiles and glucose tolerance. It improved outcomes in 76.6% .6 of preeclampsia, miscarriage, and childbirth complications. It improved immunogram and coagulation parameters, reduced childbirth complications, increased spontaneous labor, decreased labor weaknesses, and reduced fetal asphyxia when combined with thymolin. It improved menopausal symptoms and estradiol levels in women. It reduced the development of tumors in rodents across several different studies. It improved the immune functions in humans receiving chemotherapy treatment. Hi, Brendan Henry here. If you're finding this video valuable, I highly recommend grabbing a copy of my book, Peptide Salvation. I have made absolutely sure that Peptide Salvation is the most helpful and accurate book on peptides ever written. I wrote it because over the past year, I've heard guys say, Brendan, your peptide mastery course is too expensive, and I don't have $1,000. Well, consider this my gift to you and our gift to anyone who wants to learn about the life-changing magic of peptides, because now you can get what is, in some ways, an upgraded version of my course, Peptide Mastery, at a fraction of the price. But that's not the only reason I wrote this book. I was looking for someone, anyone, who could share accurate, meaningful information about peptides, only to end up completely disappointed. I bought every single peptide book published on Amazon, only to find they were like primitive cave drawings, filled with incorrect science and dangerous misinformation. If you've seen our Science Check articles, you already know how other so-called experts stack up. But I have made absolutely sure peptide salvation is scientifically flawless, with more citations to real scientific research than any other peptide book ever published. Now to be clear, if you want bonuses, advanced protocols, and lifetime free updates, Peptide Mastery is for you. But make no mistake, aside from this, Peptide Salvation is the single best peptide resource available, bar none. Just click the link in the description to get your copy now. Now transitioning over to Epitalin, which is the single peptide isolated from epithalamin, which was shown to stimulate the TERT gene, which increases telomerase activity, and it lengthens telomeres and human somatic cells allowing for more cellular divisions to take place. This also activates thymosin beta-10, which selectively kills cancer cells. It promotes melatonin production at a much lower dose than epithalamin. Only 0.1 milligrams was required versus 50 milligrams with epithalamin. It's geroprotective to the thymus, induces deheterochromatization, which reactivates silence genes, it enhances GDF-11 activity, which is a protein that is associated with a reversal of cardiac hypertrophy in older age. It upregulates tumor-suppressing genes, STK11, and interferon gamma, thereby improving immune function. It reduces epidermal growth factor 2, which leads to tumor suppression, and it reduced breast cancer risk in mice, decreases rates of spontaneous induced and transplanted tumors in animal models, reduced colon cancer development in an animal study, increases superoxide dismutase, seroloplasmin, and glutathione antioxidants more effectively than melatonin, protected hippocampal neurons better than exogenous melatonin in hypoxia, improved thyroid hormones T3 and T4 production in birds with impaired thyroid, restores chromosomal abnormalities in the bone marrow cells in hypokinesia, which is a condition meaning low movement and potentially making it useful in conditions like chronic fatigue, anemia, or even leukemia. It increases neuronal differentiation through transcription factors, Nestin and GAP43, although it didn't do so as well as Pinealon or Vesugin, and it also could not prevent death to neurons like Pinealon, Vialon, or Vesugin. 
It promotes regeneration of the retina, including in retinitis pigmentosa. It reduces lipid peroxidation, delays senescence in cultured mouse oocytes, and the culture feasibility post-thaw in bovine oocytes. So it could even be useful, potentially, in people who are going through the early stages of menopause. It may, in fact, slow it down. And as we have seen in studies, it also reduces symptoms of menopause by raising estradiol levels. It improves cisplatin-induced kidney injury in a rodent model, but not as well as ovagen or cartilax. It improved immune function in old people, including CD4 T lymphocytes. It improved osmotic hemolysis in culture, which enhances the red blood cell's ability to change shape to pass through narrow openings, which can help to prevent blood clots. And it enhanced red blood cell membrane stability and reduced lipoprotein oxidation. However, it did not decrease the percent of dead cells in the neuronal population compared to Vesugin, Pinilon, and Vylon. Now you can dose epitalin as low as 100 micrograms to get some benefits of enhanced melatonin production. If using it intranasally, you shouldn't exceed 600 micrograms, as our human testers have reported some forms of temporary agitation from dosages which are exceeding this. But that may be due to activation of the neocortex, which is seen in rodent models. Dosages range in the patent from 0.01 up to 0.1 milligrams per kilogram of body weight in humans. However, you can also inject it at higher dosages as there's no risk to toxicity, as indicated by its testing it up to 5,000 times equivalent human dose acutely or 1,000 times chronically. However, if you are going to inject it in the long term, uh, you may still want to be cognizant of the fact that it can potentially induce a temporary agitation in higher dosages. And you can take it in the short term or long term depending on how much benefits you want, but if you are really trying to get the maximum uh, anti-neoplastic, which is the anti-cancer effects out of epitalin, then I would suggest you use a much higher dosage and for a prolonged period of time, especially in combination with other peptides, which are highly anti-cancer as well, because you really can't afford to only be taking one peptide in such cases. And there are many other peptides which benefit the immune system and also inhibit tumor growth. Now, the studies do indicate that longer term is better than the shorter term, and with no known risks, it may be a good idea to consider extending your treatment course if you really want to get the benefits from this peptide. It's been my experience that people just do not take enough of it to really get the benefits from it. And, you know, in today's world, where technology and stress constantly disrupt our natural circadian rhythms, pineal gland peptides like epitalin offer a way to restore balance and promote longevity. Whether your goal is to boost your immune system, improve your sleep, inhibit cancer progression, or simply live a healthier, longer life, these peptides deserve serious consideration. Chronic stress and excessive exposure to blue light can reduce CFOS in our pineal gland, which is a marker of sensitization, meaning that our pineal gland effectively becomes desensitized, and its ability to secrete melatonin and regulate circadian rhythms becomes disrupted. This impaired sleep quality can potentially lower dopamine D2 receptor activity and testosterone levels, which could contribute to depressive disorders. Now, while it hasn't been conclusively proven that pineal gland peptides directly increase dopamine or testosterone in humans, studies do show that they help regulate dopamine according to natural circadian rhythms in rodents. And additionally, research on rodent models and menopausal women has demonstrated their ability to enhance testosterone or estradiol levels respectively suggesting they may have potential to support hormonal health as we age. And in fact, epitalin is also found in the pituitary gland, so it does make sense that it might have some regulatory action going on there. This has been Brendan Henry, the founder of the Peptide Science Institute and the world's leading expert in peptide science. Thank you for watching, and please check the link in the description to stay up to date with our latest research.